as the saying goes when your mind is strong you are strong in your life you can win any battle so for having a healthy life and when i'm saying healthy life i'm not saying physically uh, i'm saying mentally when you are mentally strong definitely you're going to win all the battles and mental health and mental illness is that kind of topic which is less discussed less shared so regarding that topic today democracy before seven are going to have a talk show with our guest person let's see what we have okay good evening viewers welcome to dimapur 247 as i always start my show by saying a big thank you to all our viewers and all the people who support us everyone uh, i am uday kumar and as you know i bring talk shows to all of you which are beneficial to the society to everyone so this evening dimapur 247 we are having a talk show with on a very important topic which is which must be reached to uh, all around the corners so yes uh, today dimapur 247 team requested the team members the official of office bearers of listening station they will talk about that and they will let you know what is it about so i'll introduce my guests to you all i have with me ma'am alokali zimomi she is the general secretary of listening station she has also published her book she is an author of menopause embracing your midlife welcome to the show ma'am thank you thank you for having me and next we have sir anato yepto he is the executive member of listening station i welcome you too sir on the show thank you for having <laughs> how are you feeling being on the show with me quite good <laughs> yeah. yeah relaxed and good <laughs> thank you i i am going to make you celebrities <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that nah. okay then uh, sir first right away i'll start that as our viewers or even me or anyone mm. they would like to know what is this listening station all about i put this question to you sir all right um first of all i want to start by thanking you like you said very important topic and there is still very less awareness we had to do this so thank you for having us okay. and um the listening station we started this in the year 2020 the year of pandemic now our friend now the director of the listening station mr khekto chishi I I note on that he should have been here and that would have been better but he's had to go to Kohima for some paperwork so he's unable to be here so he um proposed to start a project to try and help people with um to try and help people regarding mental health right so he gathered some friends all of us from are from counseling and psychology background Okay. So he really does up and so we agreed and that's how we started. Now I think with those that's okay. Thank you. Uh I'm very happy that you said that as your team members uh all of you are from the psychological background only and not just like anyone coming in forming a team and all these things. I think because for mental issues or mental health who will know better than the psychologists and all these things. So I I feel proud that I'm having a talk show with you sir and ma'am. It's really a very important topic and I would say that you two are as you described you two are like angels and or your team also. Blessings in these guys because it will be a very helpful thing for everyone whoever can reach you. Thank you. Okay, uh I would give chance to ma'am like uh, okay. anything you want to say as introduction about this topic or anything okay. we are going to have a talk today on basically our myths and misconceptions uh, we have lots of myths and misconceptions about mental mental health and counseling i think ma'am will have give us some information on that yeah thank you so much for having us and yes like you say this is very important topic mental health and counseling so um, our naga culture our naga context thanks to the pandemic of course we suffer so much but because of the pandemic we are also becoming aware of what mental health is and what counseling is 
but um, unfortunately again unhelpful myths and stigma around or about mental health are very rampant and because of which people are not able to seek the help that they required okay. and many are struggling inside and therefore like my um, team said here uh, the listening station aims to give telephonic counseling to those people we aim to give them uh, free counseling and also we help them and therefore uh, you know, uh, introducing or maybe creating an awareness about myths and misconception about mental health becomes very impor uh, important and imperative so that people will get to know what is the fact about mental health because when we talk about myths it is just misrepresentation of the truth right yes, yes. so yeah thank you uh, yes that's very uh, important because even me or like many of the people we just go with the flow like what people are saying yes. listen to that things and all these things so, uh, if i can ask you just more on that like if you have to say some myths which mm -hmm. is like mostly observed mm -hmm. or believed in the mm -hmm. field of mental health mm -hmm. some few if you can name them okay so because i am naga so i will speak uh, from the context of nagaland okay. so uh, nagaland is blessed with lots of prayer homes and then prayer centers right and we can go there and then get spiritually motivated which is very helpful for spiritual health at the same time we do call all those people who are working in the prayer center we do call them counselors but they are prayer warriors okay. and so thankful that uh, some church association they have come up and then they have strictly given this awareness that we are to address them as prayer warriors and not counselors okay. because the role and then the way they do things are different and therefore one myth that i observe is prayer warriors are counselors yeah. right but the fact is yes prayer warriors can be a counselor if they have background in psychology or if they have this uh, if they are trained in counseling psychology and all but not all the prayer warriors are counselors that is the fact that I want to clarify. And me saying this does not mean that I am trying to offend anyone there, Definitely. but trying to clarify. Yes. But I'm so happy that Nagas are coming up and we are getting to know better about this subject. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Even I, I'll be honest, I, I came to know it about it just now only. Okay. Because many of my friends and like known people, they say counseling they shake bar mm. and prayer center they shake and all these mm. things. Though yes, we respect prayer centers and everything, as Nam said. Nothing against them, but uh, they can be said as prayer, prayer right. writers and yes. not counselors and all these things. Okay, and if I have to put one more, what is the uh, like misconception about mental health? One point, like about that. Mm, yeah, there is myths again about mental health and mental illness. Okay. So when we think about people, tend to think that mental health and mental illness are synonymous they are same but actually it is not they are poles apart so when we talk about mental health according to who it is a state of well-being in which a person realizes his or her potential or ability can cope with the normal stresses of life and can work productively and fruitfully so that they can make contribution to the society right mm. so here mentally healthy people does not mean they don't get stress of course all of us get some stress Maybe the intensity can be low, medium to high. We all get stressed, right? Me coming here, I mean, like to this talk show, I was a little stressed up, but I could manage it because now I'm feeling relaxed, right? So like all of us, we get little stress in our day-to-day -day life, but we are able to cope up with it. Yeah. So mentally healthy person are those people who can overcome and who can go ahead in life like that but when we talk about mental illness, illness. mental illness is an illness that affect the way people think that affect the way people feel and that affect the way they behave or interact with others so okay. these are two different things okay i think i'm okay. pretty sure so this is something. Yes. can i just chip in and supplement something that you said yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure. so yeah a little I mean, a healthy dose of stress is necessary yes. and important, like she's mentioned, right? But when we allow those stresses to overcome us mm. to the point that they cripple us, right? Mm. Okay. It becomes a problem. It becomes yes. unhealthy. Mm. So if there's a healthy amount of stress, it implies that I give importance to what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. right? But if I have no care in the world about what I'm, what I'm going to do, yeah. there is something that's not right okay. but again if i'm worried too much if i'm concerned too much yeah. that mm. it becomes crippling for me 
Now that's become unhealthy. Yeah. Okay. So like she said, uh, a healthy amount of stress. Yeah. That's that important. Be that should that be there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So nice. I think I'm uh, getting not only I, we all are viewers and we are getting good information about all these things. I really, I am a teacher, but I was not very sure about all these things. And as both of you are answering, I'm, I am much more excited to talk about all these things so that people get to know the facts and all these things. Mm. Uh, I would like to ask sir uh, that, as you said, it's a telephonic counseling. Yes. So like, <coughs> suppose we can only do, uh, talk to you on telephones or like we can come face to face also. If suppose someone wants to meet face to face to you. Yes, yeah, surely there's, there's provision for um, face to face personal counseling. Now we started telephonic counseling because we started this during the pandemic. Now during the pandemic, personal contact were discouraged. So we had to, you know, um, get hold of what is available. So the, the most available thing during the pandemic was phone call. So we, you know, we started with telephonic counseling and we still have telephonic counseling as our main source of, you know, helping people. But if there are people who wants to and who feel the need yeah. to come face to face and have personal counseling, there's room for that. We uh, yeah, we have an office or uh, we are located at Langridgeon, Texas Colony. We have our office there. So if there are needs for personal counseling, we call the client to the office yeah. and we have counseling there, personal counseling. Yeah. One more note on that. Um, we also decided to stick to phone counseling because mental health awareness, like we've been saying, and, uh, yes. it's very less, yes. right? The awareness, there is some awareness, but it's still very less. And people are, you know, um, a little laid back or a little um, uneasy yes. to come forward yes. for counseling. Yes. Yes. So if somebody were to come seeking for counseling personally, yes. the people who sees that person going for counseling are going to say things, yes. murmur. Yes. Now that, people, that person becomes conscious. Mm -hmm. So the reason we stick with phone counseling is also, you know, to ease the pressure on people yeah. who need counseling for this moment, at the moment. Yes. We hope to be able to, you know, make going for counseling, going for therapy as a normal practice. Okay. Because it should be a normal practice. Be a normal practice. Yes. Thank you, so nice. What Sir said is, I, like, I think I like the answer, and that's the fact, uh, to make the client, or let's say the person who is coming for counseling, feel more easy. And in terms of privacy also, privacy yes. also, I think they will be more safer there. Yeah. If suppose uh, me, I want to have a talk, with, I want to have a counseling with all of you. I'm talking from the viewer's point of view. Mm -hmm. So they are scared to like, uh, dan jao, dan, I, because if they are coming for counseling, is definitely they have something disturbances in that. Yeah. Okay. Ma'am, I'll put the next question to you. Yeah, like, sure. uh, when we say mental health and all these things, so... I don't know, so I'm asking you. Is it like this? Uh, people who are financially like troubled, messed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they come for counseling, or like, is it like somebody having love affairs problems, marriage problems? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do we have any specific category, or like counseling, or like mental health can be hitting anywhere? Yeah. So, like I said, mental health is very broad, and everyone can come to counseling. Okay. But there is a myth which states that only drug addicts go for counseling. Oh. Right because they are drug addict, everybody knows them, so they have to go for counseling, they have to go to rehabilitation center. Yeah. And now when they go, we have stigma around them and we tend to whisper and then we tend to like murmur behind them. And then there is less support from the family members. There is less support from the community as well. But counseling, as we see, it can uh, be for anybody and everybody can come for counseling. So like you said, marriage, marital problems, people come. And then for financial problem, because without money, people get into stress, stress, right? So in order to cope up with that, they need someone so that they can be listened to, so that they can vent out. And therefore, it is very important that they come. Also relationship problem, yes. I have also had so many, uh, not so many, but few of my clients who had relationship problems. So yes, because youngsters, they are so into relationship and then uh, that way they're getting stress, extra stress maybe, right? Apart from this social pressure or um, yeah, college pressure and also, yes. So people can also come to counseling in order to 
learn coping mechanism how do they handle their stress or like people can also come to counseling or when they face transition maybe a, a career change or maybe uh, a transition in their life like maybe they got married or they had a baby right or to change their perspective or they can come to counseling or when they lost their loved one no so every aspect it includes every aspect and we can go to counseling and there is no um, like um, limitation that because of this reason only I have to go to counseling no it is not that but we have a myth that counseling is only for this and that is why the word counseling no we have used this word counseling and then it has become so cliche that the original intended meaning of what counseling is has become impaired so that was a beautiful answer uh, for those who are with us our friends our brother sisters we are having a talk show with the team members of listening station as they say listening station is a counseling and like giving they're giving counselings to the people who are depressed or like anxious or like having stress and all these things uh, i'm pretty sure we all have problems in our life i would request that if we have problems and if you feel that nobody's listening to you or like you are feeling alone lonely please do reach out to them I'm sure they will help you out with the arms open. Thank you. I'll just move on with some more questions. I hope you are fine with that. Sure, sure. sure. And thank you. You are really giving good answers. And when I'm saying good answers, means the answers which are helpful to the people. And somewhere I read that India, and especially Nagaland also, or any country, any place, we need these kind of sessions where people talk about we nowadays we only talk about banks, money, business, market, city. No, hardly people talks about mental stress and all these things. Yeah. Uh, sir, I would like to ask one question to you as sure. this name, listening station. What is the meaning? What is the reason of this name, sir? Um, the listening station. We came up with this name with the sole intention of listening. Right? Yeah. We want to listen to the problems that the people have. Now. <clears throat> I want to differentiate between um, listening in the context of a counseling and therapy from just normal, ordinary listening. So, say you have something that's bothering you inside of you, and um, maybe you'd like to open up to your friend, or to your family, or to a loved one, or a significant other. Now, there's something that holds you back. That's, there's something that holds us back. And what is that? So I have a weight that's weighing me down inside. Now, if I share it to a friend and say that friend shares it to another friend, another friend to another friend. Now that secret that's been weighing me becomes a common knowledge. Now the, the weight is multiplied. Or I hesitate to open up to a family member or a loved one out of fear of upsetting them or out of creating resentment right so there's always um some kind of this um how do we say consequence right in opening up mm -hmm. now how is listening in a counseling setting different i'll tell you a few reasons now in a counseling or in a therapy context listening differs because in a counseling context number one listening is non-judgmental okay right non-judgmental when you come with a problem and talk to me as a counselor as a therapist i'm not going to judge you for the issues that you have for the things that you might have done right instead what i'm going to try is to enable you to overcome those issues right so that's number one now number two is um it is a confidential listening right now with friends there's a chance that your problem is going to be shared to other problem to other friends right but in a counseling setting there's confidentiality so what the client and the counselor talks or discusses between them remains only between those two persons right? so there's confidentiality it's you can be important. sure really of that important. yeah it's yes. very important and the third thing is there is um care involved right it's a caring listening it is attentive listening 
when you come to me and share your problem to me as a counselor, I make sure that you feel that your problem, your issue is important to me. And I will listen emphatically and I will listen attentively and make sure that you are understood. Make sure that you are heard and help you find solutions to your problem, right? To enable you to help yourself. So that's how listening in a counseling context differs from just ordinary listening. And that's why we came up with this name, the listening station. Station. We want to listen to your problem. Well, that's very nice. And I was, when you were talking, I was enjoying it because uh, the mini itself stands very grand. I'm pretty sure I'm going to share this video, this message with many of my friends and all because as you said, when people are depressed, there should be people who are listening yeah. Yeah. with mm -hmm. love and care, mm -hmm. yes. without being judged mm -hmm. and with a promise that I'm not going to leak it out. Yeah. Yes. Thank you Very so much. Nice. So nice. It's a beautiful name with beautiful meaning. Dear viewers, you can please reach out to them. Uh, our On our screen, we will show all the details of where they are located, their address, their phone numbers, everything. Moving on, ma'am, I want to ask you one question. I don't know whether it's a myth or is it a, like a reality. Many people, they say, like, bacha se, bacha ando ki mondu ho. Bacha ando ki stress ho or ki depressed ho. Yeah. Uh, life thing, don't bacha se. Like they say, children don't get depressed or they are not sad. Yeah. It, uh, what is this? Is it a myth? Yes, it is absolutely myth because uh, as WHO stated, World Health Organization, they stated that worldwide, okay, this is 10 to 20% of children and adolescent experience mental disorder. And half of the mental illness begin at the age of 14. So now, considering that, we, it is very important that we take care of child's mental health. You see, when we talk about health, it does not only include physical health, but it includes mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and social health. And when we are focusing only on the physical aspect of a person, we are neglecting the others. So like you say it, we tend to ignore um, children's feeling. <clears throat> we tend to ignore children's emotions. And we just say that they are just acting like that. It is their way of, no, uh, it is their way of showing, or maybe it is their way of seeking attention from us. But one thing that we really need to understand is they are people, they are person with feelings and they also have mental health and therefore we need to address and we need to give them importance. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's again, again more important because many, again, even I have kids in my house, my nephews and all, so we, when they are sad or when they are depressed, we mostly feel, Chalo, yes. I think our viewers and all of us, we need to break this myth and as ma'am said, when children, especially when they are depressed and all, we need to have a talk with them. Yeah, right, it's very important. Ma'am, uh, I'll put the next question to you only. Uh, I don't know why, again, I have heard this, I have experienced this. Uh, I'll not talk about any religion, mm -hmm. but in every religion, mm -hmm. they say, uh, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. believers in God, they are always happy. They are they go tan every problem la solution allow pare and all these things. How how do you look this matter? Okay, so believers don't get depressed or believers don't get any mental health issues is a myth. Because you see, believers are not all those who have only spiritual health or physical health. But like I've mentioned earlier, health comprises of so many aspects. It includes physical, mental, emotional, and also this social and spiritual. And therefore, just like we cannot guarantee when we are going to get physically ill, right? We cannot guarantee when I'm going to get appendix. I cannot guarantee when I'm going to get fever. Therefore, I have to take care of my physical health. Similarly like that, in our life's journey, we face lots of ups and downs. We face lots of stress in our life. And therefore, in order not to be affected by mental health issues, we need to take care at the earliest. We need to take care of our health. And therefore, mental health, just like uh, physical health, can affect any one of us. Mental health can affect any one of us, irrespective of religion, irrespective of ethnicity and background. Okay. Yes. 
so nice again. And then continuing with the same thing, I think people believe, okay, he's financially stable, so he may not be depressed. Or he has a beautiful wife or beautiful children, so he may not be depressed. Again, these things can also be broken. Yeah, this can. This is a myth because myth. Uh, they may be very happy outward, but we don't know what is going on inside them. We don't know what is going on between them. Are they really happy as a couple? Are they really happy as a family? Okay. Right? So money, of course, we money can make us very comfortable, but it does not guarantee that we will be happy. Yeah. So yeah, it's a myth. Okay. So I would like to ask something to you. Sure. Suppose a person is depressed, but he, he or she, if they are not opening up, they are not sharing like to you or to anyone, be it face to face or be it telephonic. And how do we get to know like this person is depressed? Any signs are there of anyone can answer depression or anxiety or anything or like how we can feel that okay, this man is disturbed or like he is like planning to commit suicide or anything. How do we just get to know the information? Of course, there are symptoms uh, that, are, that can be visible. Sometimes they are totally invisible. Okay. So people with suicidal tendencies or suicidal thoughts or people with depression, sometimes people with depression may seem the happiest, may mm -hmm. seem the jolliest okay. on the outside. We have no idea what's going on inside. So again, the, yeah yeah it's completely different it may not be as how we can see on the outside so that's one thing now the second thing i want to say is um ethically <clears throat> we cannot as a counselor or, or as a therapist i cannot force myself to uh, try and help a person without his or her consent okay. right because you cannot help a person who sees no problem with his or her own actions okay. or the way he or she thinks, right? The person, the individual himself or herself will have to first you know, understand the things that might not be going well in his or her life and thus the problems that are um, resulting from that. And then it will have to be the person who takes the first initiative to seek help and only then we can help we can step in and help but of course there are like i've said earlier there will be symptoms through which we can you know identify okay. maybe that person has some kind of problems yeah. that way we can study that you can chip in if you have anything you want to add on that oh yeah so like oh, when the person has depression they will also have the symptoms like they will not have interest with the things that they were interested earlier okay. or maybe they want to stay alone or they want to like and for like suicidal tendency if they have then they want to they will talk about like trying to they will talk to others like they are not going to be here for ever so if there are any debts that i have to pay then let me clarify and all that no so all these are the signs and symptoms we cannot just share everything here but yeah, yeah. today yes. but all these are the signs and symptoms that we get it that they are yeah maybe they are going through and we have to be there for them so they can if not they can i mean e even if they don't go to the counseling center also close ones loved ones can always be there for them thank you such good answers uh, sir i'd like to ask you like as a listening station uh, you are here on the show and then i'm pretty sure our viewers must be getting information, good information from both of you. So any any kind of projects or activities listening station has done to reach out to people or like to uh, let people know that you are there for them? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll be able to share a few things. Um, but before that, let me just say this, that um, our office timings are from 9 a.m. to okay, yes. 7 p.m. So, usually, yeah. Or no, it's 5. Yeah, 5. Okay, 9 to 5. five. Yeah. 9 to 5. And um, our counseling is free of cost. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. And then um, activities. In the initial stage, in the year 2020, uh, we were involved in helping our Naga brothers and sisters um, who returned from different parts of the country during the pandemic. They were quarantined for 40 days or so. And so uh, we collaborated with all Nagaland Counselors Association and offered telephonic counseling to the returnees. That was the first phase. And in the second phase, 
also we volunteered along with um, National Health Program Nagaland as well as Therapy Nagaland Association and that was the second phase we um, volunteered and offered counseling to these uh, returnees again and then so we had our exposure during those two events so after that people some people came to know about us and uh, even after the pandemic even after the quarantine people you now kept uh, continued to call in and we answered to their calls and we yeah we continued that and uh, we have also had five programs awareness programs so some of them have been seminars some of them were just um, informal gathering sessions yes. just yes. creating awareness talking about you know mental health so we've had some programs in church some in school yeah so those are some projects we have had about our future ex yes, aspect any, i was about to ask that any yeah more coming on so so far we have only you know um worked around dimapur right but uh, our vision is that um as we uh, continue we want to reach all the different districts of nagaland so our our agenda that we have prepared is that um, in two months we will try to at least reach out to two districts to hold seminars to hold awareness programs about mental health so it may take time but gradually we plan to reach all the districts of nagaland and talk about mental health mental health so yeah. nice uh, I'm, I'm i'm glad that you said that and there's one saying like mm. <laughs> it will be a little late but they will reach and as you said you are going to churches and schools which is yes. more most important places and all and i'm pretty sure i'll share this with any school authorities also so that if they invite you to schools and all, you are ready to go, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. TK, uh, uh, as we are about to end the show, uh, I would just like, ma'am, to give a message like which you want to give from your side to our okay. viewers. Like. Okay, so my message to all the viewers is please take care of your health. And health, I mean, it's not only just physical health, so it includes everything. So. Uh, if you are going through some ups and downs and you feel like you are alone i want you to know that you are not alone and i want you to know that we are here for you so we also go by the name at the listening station in our instagram page so kindly follow us and then you can also yeah feel free to call us and we can get back to you so please stay healthy and be kind to everyone thank you thank you so nice the same thing to you sir any message you want to give to them mm, okay i'll just i'll try and say this in my name now any at the end of the day, uh, when you're in your bed, just nijo rekla buhin ene bhabi sabi na. Aji din te ke ba galti kuri se na. Maybe not entirely wrong, but did Pardon. you do something seemingly wrong na? Yes. Or ke ba kuro parala na. Bahal kam ke ba kuro parala. Paro thakala na paro se kura nai na. Itan any bhabi sabi na. Aro kiba galti nishna kuri se numun hoyle galti kuri shakle kile itu kuri se nijor ke bhabi sabi na. And because like we've been discussing awareness bishi komti ase na. And there are so many things unresolved yete bi aro yete bi na unresolved bishi ase mohan among us na in our communities. And because of that problem bishi hoy na personal problems communal problems bishi hoy na. So at the end of the day, when you're in your uh, in your bed, just think to yourself, kiba galti kuri se na kile kuri se na how can I better myself? Or kiba kuro parala kuro pariwa thakala bi kura nai na kile kura nai na be prepared to do it the next time you get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's my message to the dear viewers for now. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I will say that as a compliment. Please take it. Uh, you both talk so softly and it really feels that you are welcoming your clients with open arms and soft and care. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, dear viewers, today uh, we got our guests here. They broke lots of myths, which is widely believed and spread. And just because our viewers love us so much and we love them. The Mambo 24 seven team has decided that as mental health and mental illness, depression 
is a very serious topic it's a very important topic a very broad topic so team dimapur 247 will have one more show with them with our counselors with our guests here in the days coming ahead so that we'll have more information on this important topics i thank you both for being on the show ma'am uh, so means much. a lot um, thank you sir thank you so for much doing an amazing job thank absolute you. job you are the people who are helping people from behind if people are reaching to their office or to their workplace healthy and smart behind that i'm pretty sure you are there thank you thank you so much viewers for being with us uh, please do support give your love and care to dimapur 247 we are committed to bring all the good things to our people thank you everyone